that has got to be a different type of mindset because you spend your life preparing for the worst call yeah. that you'll ever get. You know, a plane load of 300 people with surrounded by jet fuel that just slammed into the tarmac. Luke, thank you so much for joining us on the 2448. I'm so excited to hear about you and your business and all the stuff you're into. Sure. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so just welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Glad yeah. to be here. This is great. Kick it off. Just like, let me know what you guys do. It was so funny. Normally in these shows, we go through and do like this extensive pre-interview and there's all this stuff for yeah. our viewers and watchers that may not know this. Our camera gear got smashed on the way up to Canada and it must be a very bumpy ride across the yeah. border. Yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, <laughs> we got delayed and then we had some stuff. Anyway, what do you guys do? Tell me about Modus. Well, Modus is a, is a company about six years old, and we basically build tools ourselves and supply them to uh, to firefighters. Uh, in in a real in a real nutshell, uh, it's uh, Paul <laughs> Terpstra perfect. and myself, our partners. Uh, Paul runs the show. He he's there day to day, uh, and uh, we we started off designing a tool called the the, the, the Snagger tool uh, about twelve years ago, and uh, and then about six years ago, partnered up with Paul, and uh, we we you know trying to sell one tool. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense, so we've we've added a whole lot of tools to the arsenal. So now we're selling about yeah we've got about forty different uh, SKUs in the company, no and uh, and we've we've also tried some oblique ways of uh, yeah connecting with the firefighting world uh, through uh, you know Modus TV, uh, interviewing it's a little bit like you're doing with the podcast, kind of yeah. featuring firefighters in a, in a in you know in the realm outside of the outside of the fire world. What do they do on the side? And uh, so just yeah, kind of kicking the can in every direction we can. That's yeah. cool. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing about that today. As I kick it off, I'm curious, like, how do you go get started in a business making pieces of fire, like for firefighters? Are you a firefighter? Yeah. What's your background? Like, give me that story. Sure. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a firefighter. I've been a firefighter for 20, 20 years. I'm a, uh, on a little, on, in Kempville here. Um, and, uh, and so really the, 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 the idea for the tool came from firefighting from, mm. you know, being at a couple large, uh, Large house fires, one winter in the snow. You know the hose is slippery. Uh, you're, you know, and and it's it's difficult to drag it around back for for you know protecting exposures, things like that. And so that's kind of where the idea came from. Yeah. But my background's actually in dairy equipment, um, milking equipment for cattle. Really. Uh, so we sell and install. Uh, well, what was pipelines now parlors, and then and then now robotic milking equipment. Um, for milking cows. And so in that, I have a background in welding, plumbing, electrical, uh, construction, um, and that sort of thing. So I went home after these, uh, these fires, and I, I just simply soldered, uh, soldered copper pipe into the shape of a letter S. This is not the soldered one, but just, just played with it and brought it back to the fire hall, played with it with, a, with the guys. And, I, and then, you know, it takes about two, three years of just letting that sit on the shelf and then deciding, you know what, <laughs> yeah. this could actually be something. And uh, yeah. so that's kind of where it started. So tell me about Kempville. Is this a small town or just like a big career agency or what's yeah. the fire department like? No, uh, it, uh, well, the Kempville town itself is about 15,000 people. We cover a very large area. I don't know how many square miles, but uh, anyway, we've got a it's, it's a, it's a rural department with a, with a, with a town core. Uh, we're 45 firefighters on the on the department. We're a paid on call. We've got a full time chief and a full time deputy and fire prevention officer. So we have three full time staff, and uh, it's it's really gone through changes in the last 20 years. You know, when I first Come joined, on. it was uh, it was pretty laid back. Um, you know, that you kind of got given a pager and you, you know, your training was when you jumped in the truck. I, uh, I, the town I started in was about 15,000 people. And it was one of those like, all right, uh, alarm's going off. Just, yeah. uh, it was started as I was a 7,000 town person at the time. It's like, show up, please. We need extra hands. You don't know anything. Well, Fine. We'll teach you. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it was a little bit better than, than, than I'm, yeah, we're making it out to be, but, uh, <laughs> and then we had a new chief, um, uh, unfortunately our old chief passed away and and a new chief about 10 years ago who really kind of yanked us up by our bootstraps and uh you know uh made the training a little more rigorous and uh and a little more professionalism added to the department which was sure. really good i mean we needed yeah. to kind of you know and 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 we are growing like like crazy that i mean i think when i joined the town was only eight thousand people and now we're at 15. Oh, wow. that's cool and so the service level had to come up um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of people moving in from the, the nearby, well, from Ottawa, the nearest mm. city. And, uh, and so, and we're, we're, we do the majority of our calls are medical. 
actually. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, so firefighting sort of a, I mean, it's 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 certainly part of it, but uh, more than uh, more than sixty percent of our calls are medicals. Very interesting. How did you yeah. get involved? I feel like if you're in the dairy equipment business and then in a small town outside of the capital, like how did you get yeah. involved in the fire service? Well, actually, I got I first started in Alberta. We were we were living and working in Alberta, and and I was just part of this little town of Didsbury, and I just wanted to get to know people in the town. And uh, I went to one meeting at the Lions Club. There, it's a service <laughs> club we have out here, like uh, Rotary. Yeah. And they talked about tail twister, and I don't know. It's kind of. I just thought this isn't for me. Like uh, to sit around a table and drink coffee and and talk about ways to get involved. I'd rather do something. And so I joined the fire department there, and loved it. Uh, that and that was a really small, small town. Uh, again, learned by experience. I remember my first call, jumping off a truck, all excited. It was Friday afternoon. There was a garage on fire. Had my SCBA pack on, pulled my mask over my face, and <laughs> didn't have a bottle. Couldn't on. breathe. I forgot to turn the valve on. You know, I was gonna say, I've done <laughs> that before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, let's remember to turn the valve on. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, that's the kind of yeah. It was, but it was, uh, yeah. And then just the camaraderie, as you know, uh, yeah. meeting a bunch of guys and 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 you go through some difficult situations together, and that that, yeah. that obviously forms a bond. And uh, um, yeah, never looked back. That's so interesting. Yeah. Did you have family members or anybody like like how? I don't know when I was a kid, I didn't think like, oh, the fire station's a place to join. It just we were in, in like outside of DC, so it wasn't like a thing you could do. But right. Like, is that common? Everyone knows there. Or how did you kind of know that was the path? I didn't. I didn't. I, I we, actually all my life had been raised in the church and oh, and kind of had this this it's this a service this oriented type of thing. I'm yeah. Sure. Well, but it was also a closed world mm. i didn't know my neighbors if they didn't go to the the, the same church we did we're kind of dutch we're dutch background so every, it was either dutch or they went to church that's how you knew them and <laughs> I, and this was actually a way to kind of reach out of that world and uh you know and and so so to get get to know people outside of you know uh the dutch community in a yeah. sense um and i just I, I thought, well, firefighting sounds kind of cool and it and it works with the practical skills and background that i had had yeah. So I just uh, I, I just knocked on the door and and in in Kempville actually um, when I joined I was told later on that I was the first one that nobody knew that they had hired. Otherwise it was always like well you know Charlie's the chief's son let's hire him on or or so and so is the nephew and so or you know, I know this guy from hockey yeah or whatever but they're like who is this guy but I had had some experience in Alberta and I guess I sold myself well and they took me on so that, <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that was twenty years ago. So yeah. you've been in 20 years in the fire service, volunteer yeah. service, and, and did you ever work in the fire service? It was always like no, a part No, no, I never thing. did. No, or, I've always no. had other jobs. Um, I, I never uh, I never wanted to sit around waiting for a fire. That's what never appealed to me to be a career firefighter. Nothing wrong with that if that's yeah. what you're doing. But uh, no, I had the family business and dairy equipment. Um, I had done, um, I, I, I always liked lots of different jobs. We did uh, wind farm development for a while, solar, solar power and excavation business, uh, uh, construction. So yeah. I've always had other things going on and I like the, the ability to just uh, keep busy until the tones go off Yeah, and then go get busy somewhere else. Yeah. That's awesome. What yeah. did you go to school for? Or like, what was your kind of career upbringing like in, in the professional world? I went straight from high school to working in a barn, welding, uh, plumbing, electrical, like I said, all, all those kind of, um, trades construction that sort of thing uh i've never gone to school since and never felt the need to uh yeah. i think the school of life has always been good to me and not everybody uh works well in school um i you know i always hated tests and studying and or anything <laughs> like that like i barely made it through school um but i think you know uh was raised in a in a you know to take chances you know um and and that that stood me well in, in moving forward in life just try you know go for it you know yeah. let's try it and see That's what happens. Awesome. Yeah, great. I really learn. think it's interesting when you talk about like going right out of high school into like welding in, in the barn. Like that is that's something that I feel like sometimes people forget that is possible these days. And right. when you think about the fire service, the skills that are practical on a farm or in a family business or like right yeah. out of high school into the like those are things that you use on a fire truck every day. Because a lot of times there's not a training for like, oh, I got this giant you know whatever trailer flipped over on someone. Well, you got to know a little bit about a trailer to know how to where you're going to hook and that sort of thing. And yeah. there's like, there's so much of the fire service that is just life skills that are just sharply honed life skills. And that's, 100%. that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, how do you, you know, starting up, starting the, you know, the generator or the PPV or, or firing up a chainsaw yeah. or whatever. And, and, and I, I, I have noticed a big difference when we have uh, new recruits coming in, um, 
you know, by and large, if they've grown up in the city and never seen a chainsaw or, or you know, frigged around with a gas motor on, you know, getting their skidoo going or their motorbike or whatever, just just some of these natural things that we take, took for granted yeah. growing up, it's like, oh, yeah, you, you know, you have to choke it. And, you know, you got to, you know, um, uh, yeah, those skills aren't, 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 are, aren't innate anymore because uh, yeah. there's not as much screwing around that we, like when we were kids, you know, <laughs> like, I oh, sure. I wanted us. I remember wanting a snowmobile. I wanted a skidoo, you know. And Dad's like, "Well, you got any money?" I, well, not really. Well, buddy, a friend of his had one that was seized. The engine was seized. That's Great, awesome. you can have it, or a hundred bucks, I think it was. Well, they took it yeah. home, tore the engine apart. Had no idea what I was doing. You know, talked to a couple guys and put the engine back together, and yeah, lo and behold, Eventually, it ran. There you, go. I, you got a skidoo. Now you got a skidoo. Yeah, there, yeah. So you just gain those those things, and absolutely, the fire service is a lot about that. You you know, going up to a building that's on fire, uh, knowing how it's constructed, um, you know, yeah. and that's the, that's always the strength of the department too. You got HVAC guys, you got you know, guys with background in carpentry and whatever. There's always somebody that knows uh, a little bit more about what's going on. So yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's funny. It's a good segue. In this show, obviously, we talk to people who are firefighters, who are business people, who are entrepreneurs, who are like of the public safety space. And all those people, like the people that I'm just picturing, you sitting on the back of a truck with after a call, the HVAC right. guys, the, you know, whatever. These are yeah. all people that work in businesses somewhere. Well, many yeah. of them own businesses. Were there any folks in your fire service, like when you sit at the station, you can think of that were like, oh, yeah, we always used to talk about business. Or did that ever come up for you when you were around the station or that sort of thing you mean uh, like like how to start a business or or, or being yeah, like, involved? like what are the who are the business people that were around your fire service upbringing and i'm just picturing in my fire service upbringing like the the guy in town that ran the local accounting firm it was he's now on our board like one of the nicest people i'll ever meet and right one of the guys ran a tow truck company and another guy was a builder were there people like that that you can think of specifically that were like really impactful and just in your daily life that were also firefighters um not so much. Uh, I mean, I mean, we had guys that everybody had a job. Everybody, you know, uh, but there weren't so many guys that owned their own business uh, that that were firefighters. It was that was that influence more came from from my family side to to you know to to, to run businesses or try new things. What was their um, background like? Your families? Well, it, it was in the dairy business um, again. Like my dad had started the the the, the business in in dairy equipment from with, with a with a couple partners, and they just. That were they farmers or like what they were uh, farmers actually they wanted this equipment and the equipment wasn't available in our area and so they said well why don't we become a dealer for bulmatic milk and equipment and my dad's like sure i'll i'll uh, i'll help run the dealership i know how to solder wires together and and do electronics work and the other fellow knew how to how to farm and it just kind of grew organically like that and then i think I never liked working for other people it was that simple so for, so for me it was yeah. uh, you know hey i know the feeling uh, yeah, and 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 then the idea for the tool, like the, what where where this kind of started, was was really just on my own, out, like or like there wasn't, almost kept it quiet from the rest of the department because you know no, I don't know, I, don't, I and then I just started talking to other. Actually, at the time I was in the solar industry, so we were building trackers and stuff with solar panels, and the fellas that we got our um, our uh, our solar tracker frames from, the aluminum frames are extruded aluminum. Oh, interesting. And so I was sitting there talking to them the one day, and Henry and Archie, and uh, I said, I've, I've got to figure out how to make this tool, you know, on a regular basis, not just, you know, kind of the, 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 the prototypes that I had had from China. This is a prototype that was made in China. And so I talked to them about, about that, and they, and, you know, they teach me about how extrusions work and, and how we could build the tool another way. And so I actually brought them in as partners in the company at that point. So we really didn't have a company. It kind of came about organically by talking to a whole lot of guys but yeah tell me about that starting process i want to hear about like you came up with the first tool was it like after some call or like what is what precipitated the business need for this one tool that turned into 40 tools well the yeah the very the very the 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 very genesis of that was one of the one of the guys on the department saying you know there's got to be a better way to grab hose it sounds like such a Canadian thing because, like here, like our hoses. I <laughs> talk about hoses. Yeah, right? yeah hoses. Our hoses yeah. are—they're uh, never frozen. They're always right. Like it never gets but, like cold here, so they're. They no, it wet. doesn't get cold, mm-hmm. but you do get where you're up on the third floor and there's all the 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 uh, the insulation and 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 and, and soot and, oh, and yeah, ash that's falling down. Hell, and they get yeah. slimy, or they got oils from hydraulics, or you got. Oh yeah, that's a good. Point. You know, or even just a dry hose, and you got little hands. You know, and you're grabbing it part <laughs> way through, and or if you don't have little hands, but it just just gives you a better way. You know, you've got a a handle, 
Yeah. And that you can grab and it and it pinches and you can so so that was your idea was like create this tool that lets you grab a hose because it's a pain in the behind to carry these things whether it's frozen or it's wet or it's covered in oil this little widget helps me solve that problem that's right yeah and even if you've got a nozzle with a you know with a handle on the nozzle you've got one point of contact and now you need another guy behind you're on top of a ladder truck or something like that and it was like how in the world can i you know design something that we can grab a hose at a certain uh anywhere on the hose to advance it up up a stairwell you're three lengths down and you're just helping the guys move it up and you just instead of that gripping and pulling effect is a lot a lot more tiring that's so interesting so that was the initial idea and you come up with that design was it you just whittled something together did you try a few different yeah i soldered i i I have a a plumbing kit and i went home and i grabbed some three quarter inch (laughs) copper pipe and i just I, i i made the one side uh, inch and three quarter and the other sides for two and a half and I thought hey that can handle both kinds of hose depending on which way you you know oh, which way you good. orient yeah, it. I never thought about that yeah that's yeah awesome. and and I, I've done I don't know I just thought hey the harder I pull I don't know how to show this the harder I pull the more it's going to grip yeah so if I just and I wanted to make something that was very very simple um, no moving parts no wear no wear and tear yeah you know just really 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 simple and so that was the, the the genesis was that bit of copper pipe soldered into a, a letter S. And then, okay, how do we manufacture that? And that's where I, I had another fellow that worked in the automotive industry um, sourcing car parts from all over the world. And, and yeah. he had a connection in China. So in, in China, we made up, we had this made up. This is this weighs about 10 pounds. It's solid <laughs> what stainless is that? steel. That's a solid piece of metal. Yeah, stainless steel. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, really. and then you is, start, and a, is that what I'm seeing on there? Yeah, there's a knurling on no, there. I don't know how well you can see that, that in so the... Uh, yeah. yeah. So For those I, of our you know, viewers that are listening on the uh, audio version, this is like, I'm seeing the cool... It's like this giant letter S made out of a solid piece of steel. It's pretty cool looking. We'll have to yeah, I like the joke. YouTube I've, I've patented the letter S, so people can't use it anymore. That's awesome. So yeah. how did you... Like, did somebody ask you, like, oh, hey, I, I need this S-shaped magic tool to help me move hoses? Or how did it kind of go from, like, hey, I soldered this thing together in my garage or whatever to this is a product, and then it's a product someone needs, and then I'm going to sell one? Yeah, nobody ever said, uh, like, I, I think it's this is one of these things that we're, where we were going to create the need in the marketplace or highlight the fact that many firefighters could make use of this. I, I think I... I uh, you know, not majorly forward thinking here or anything like that, but it's like, hey, this this would really help. And then when I brought the soldered pieces back to the fire hall and let <laughs> the guys play with it, that's where other ideas came forward. And that's also where it's like, hey, this is, you know, this is handy. Like this does help you grip the hose better. And and, and so then we thought, then, then you start refining it, right? Yeah. And I always played very open, like, sure, I applied for a patent, but I, but I also brought it to everybody I could to say, what do you think? What, what, what ideas are there? And so a lot of the other ideas that are incorporated into the tool um, were, were, were just an organic discussion that happened yeah. over many years. And this is over, this is over, yeah, probably two or three years before we produced the first uh, tool, uh, you know, uh, uh, commercially. That's so, yeah. Uh, did you always think it would be a business or did you think, nah, it'll be a little widget and I'll do something with it? I thought you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's you know? true. Great. Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I thought, who knows where this will go? Like, it's, 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 uh, I, and, and I had, uh, I, I, I was, well, I had other businesses going on. I had a little bit of money. I thought, I'm going to just try to see how far this will go. I'm going to, I'm going to start making some, see if we can sell them, come up with a nag, uh, with, with a name, come up with a, with a, with a, with a logo. And uh, it was Snagger Tools at the time. Oh, interesting. And 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 we, uh, yeah, I don't know, you probably can't see the logo there, but anyway, the Snagger. Oh, anyway, it's cool. got a little little logo and everything. And uh, yeah, sunk probably at the time was probably about twenty five, thirty thousand bucks into you know the first prototype. We had to buy a uh, a mold to 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 slide the uh, the extrusion through. Once we had, and working with Henry and Archie, by the way, they had a. They had a water jet, and and they were able to prototype a wire uh, a wire cutting tool, so we could do prototypes. We could make prototypes out of different metals. That's cool. This is pre three D printing. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah. Now we yeah nowadays up, throw nowadays Paul printer. fires off a three D printed you know like we have an idea and and 
you know, two days later, it's sitting there to play with, and 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 so the the that whole that whole process has been shortened considerably. Yeah. Um, from what it took me in the beginning, and then I tell you, it's just uh, it's just once you start, you took the first step. Okay, now you got a logo and a name, and you got a, a couple tools, and you think, well, I better better make a poster board and go to FDIC <laughs> and get a booth and. You know, and it just kind of goes from there, and 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 try to cobble together a website, which was pathetic. And then and then what happened was we we sold out like that of of the tools of the tools. You know, because yeah. I, I I I forget what it was twenty grand to buy aluminum and make a bunch of tools. So I think we made four hundred or five hundred tools with whatever the first batch of aluminum was, and went to FDIC and they were gone. No like way. Guys were yeah, the guys were just like, oh, this is co- this is cool, you know, and. Uh, so all right and then we took a whole pile of orders and i'm sure i ticked off you know a lot of guys not being able to fulfill orders for four months because you know now it's like all right run somewhere yeah now i had to go get i didn't know how many i was going to sell i had you know like i said 20 30 grand to get started yeah were you machining them all or were those through the extrusion they were they come out as an extrusion like a 12 foot long bar shaped like the letter s and then we cut cut them off and then oh, run so them through it this way and then yeah. you cut them like you cut them an inch wide versus yeah. oh yeah. wow yeah that's exactly awesome. yeah and then at the time that's we were a big tumble- tool holy cow we do a lot of extrusion that's a monster extrusion oh yeah it's a big extrusion and that was some <laughs> of the challenges we ran into like like the cooling the cooling in the center versus the edges made the anodizing different colors so the oh. first ones kind of have a patchy anodizing and it took us playing with the extrusion or the alloys to uh to get that to smooth out, and we tried different anodizing processes. Uh, I tell you, there was, I mean, now that I'm, I'm, I'm articulating it to you, it's like there's a lot of <laughs> steps that we went through and a lot of growing pains, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a great learning curve. I mean, it's a great uh, process. But, and then, yeah, then tumbling. We tumbled them to smooth oh, the edges. And, and uh, anyway, um, after we'd sorted that out and I realized, okay, you got to have a fulfillment, like a good website. You got to have a way of answering customers. Yeah, and you just realized, glazed over that before. Like, oh yeah, you know, I did some learning. Pit. Tell me about this. You got to have a website. That's a big lift. Like if you've never yeah. built a website, how the heck do you do that? Well, I just went and figured it out. We went on, uh, um, I, I used to, oh, I should say I used like crowdsource or crowdspring. I think it was called for designing the logo and then also giving a, a framework for the website. You just go to creatives all around the world. <laughs> I love it. Say, we hey, I want a web- hour here all the time. And I'm like, hey, can you just design this real quick? And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you get yeah. 10 bucks, I'm going to design something real quick, and then I run with it, and it's like, that was great. Well, yeah, and the thing I liked about Crowdspring, or, or I mean, there's all kinds of them now, or some versions thereof, I'm like, you, you know, I say, yeah, listen, I'll pay you guys 500 bucks for a logo, and it needs to look like this. And you get, like, submissions from literally all around the world. And I think the guy that designed ours in the end was from Indonesia somewhere. That is so It was cool. great. And, and, and so then, you know, hey, I like that. Lo- and then so it becomes this process where there's ideas from lots of people blending together. Yeah. Again, uh, and to, to, to arrive where we are. And then a website, well, I just went on to Google and I don't know. I forget it was like uh, website builder. Who's that race car driver? She oh, had Danica uh, with uh, GoDaddy. Yeah, GoDaddy. That's it. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah. our first website <laughs> like, was a GoDaddy one. That's, that was a right. Story. So I'm like, ah, GoDaddy. <laughs> okay, there's some template, and then and then I realized, okay, so people can email me the orders, and 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 then Archie and Henry had a shop where they could fulfill the orders. They could box them and ship them out, and you know we were spending a fortune on postage or, or shipping and. Mm. Yeah, anyway, where did this, you store all the goods? Was it someone's warehouse, or did you? Yeah, like, they had a warehouse. They these had are the a, they guys had that did the solar stuff. That's right. Yeah, so they had racks of 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 you know of K rail for their for their solar panels, and at the end would be a little pile of snagger tools and oh, and right. boxes and whatever. And we sourced up. We found a box company and stickers to put on the box. It was very very uh, very cute. I would say. <laughs> Thinking back, it was just very uh, well. It's how you start. You know, you got to start somewhere. I wonder, like. And I think about in our early days, you just don't realize how much goes into when a thing shows up in a box and it's beautifully packaged and it's oh, just the yeah. right and it's got an instruction manual and it's got like all those things you have to come up with. And I, yeah. you know, like how, what was your process of you make the widget, but then there's all that other stuff that has to go in the box. How did you even know what to put in there? Well, we didn't. Uh, so <laughs> the st- step one was to find a box that fit and we, we kind of. You know, I just called a box company, and and uh, you know they had something close, and all right, those are a dollar fifty each. All right, that makes sense, and 
you know, we figured out how to put the tool in, put a sticker on it, and put a bit of, uh, I forget, some kind of foam to keep it from sliding around or whatever, and that was yeah. it. A real transition happened when I involved Paul. So, this so yeah, tell me like, about where did you meet this guy? What's the story? I've, I've met him on, yeah. I know him on LinkedIn, but that's it. Okay, yeah, so Paul married my cousin. Huh. And uh, so to make sure my cousin had three square meals a day, <laughs> I offered Paul a job so that we knew that <laughs> Beth would be looked after. No, I, and I had known Paul a few years prior to that as well. He was a friend of my brother's and, and uh, just a real, again, a, a real creative guy. Um, and Paul's had, your business partner of, now, for those that don't Paul's know. Paul's my business before. partner now, yeah. yeah okay. At the time, and, and Snagger was really a, just a fledgling company that, you know, we had sold maybe, I don't know, 5,000 tools or something at that time. And, and, and really, uh, I had other businesses. I wasn't focused on it enough, and I knew that. And it was either let this thing go or let's let's take a real kick at the can and, and Paul, see if you can fly with this. And Paul had a background in, um, he had been all kinds of different things, from whittling cross-country skis to going around to teach uh, inner city kids how to build their own skateboard. Oh, cool. um, you know, from Scott. Yeah, so he, he just had a real, a real neat uh, knowledge base behind him. And he was willing to take that on. So we said, let's, uh, and, and then, then, a lot of the refining started to come into play. So when you were the, kind of transitioning from Snagger Tools to Modus, that that was Paul came in, and Paul then had the company to Modus. Like, right, that's gonna, right. We're going to take Paul's, this thing and do it. Right. Yeah, Modus was Paul's company. He had uh, movement. That's Latin for movement. Oh. And the skateboards you kind of went with that, and, and uh, yeah, and he had a vision to to have Modus be all kinds of different things in the end. I said, well, let's start with Modus Fire Rescue and we can, you know, we can bring this snagger tool to market in a more professional way. Yeah. Is and he a fireman or no? No, he's not. No, no, oh, he's, uh, yeah. And, and that was actually a strength because he's more focused on, okay, how do we build this tool more efficiently? He's not and, getting and lost in we... the weeds of like always trying to make the tool do something different. It's That's like, right. okay, let me make, <laughs> make the business. hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, and, and actually, Apple was our, in, not our inspiration, but, you know, you buy an iPhone, good inspiration, and you take yeah. it out of this nice package, and it's like, okay, we need the packaging to be as good as an iPhone. We need the fit, fit and finish of this tool to be as good as an iPhone. You so know, has like, it evolved it, to the point where it's no longer just a box with a piece of foam in it? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't have one here, but yeah, no, now it's, now it's got a, you know... <laughs> It's got a logo on four sides. It folds open with a really you know, nice no presentation. The whole is like dialed Yeah, in. yeah. No and, and Paul, that's all kudos to Paul. He kept poking at different different manufacturers and different ways of you know making the box thinner, cleaner, tighter. Um, the, the 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 refining of the tool. Now you know we got we got the name. You know the name is is laser etched. We went into laser laser engraving. That's cool. Uh, so you can custom laser your your name onto the onto the side of the tool uh, that's cool uh you know so all these little things that that made it uh that made it uh cleaner neater that uh, we went to um we bought uh, well and this is paul okay like we should we should have a cnc machine to to properly trim this thing off okay i'll go to night school for three months <laughs> and learn how to program a cnc machine oh so he did that so he did that no so way. he goes to yeah, so he goes and learns how to program a machine. Awesome. So now we have a way of cutting our own tools. And 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 with that is, you know, Paul taught himself how to do 3D printing so we could do prototypes and then we can do all these other things. And so That's so interesting. As long as we could finance Paul's learning process, he just kept on going. He's like, "All right, let's figure out how to optimize Facebook marketing. Like we got to sell more of these." And then it's like, "Oh, we need a back end uh, you know, how do the ads or how do the orders come in from Facebook? So, so you, know, you had to create that whole model of like business to consumer e-commerce. hundred percent. So yeah. GoDaddy website wasn't quite good enough. You end up having, no, to that, that went, yeah, that was problem. gone. That was long gone. Yeah, no, we got Paul involved. Then, then, then I, I, I say, you know, the first thing, but he, I mean, he was focused on a whole lot of things at the same time. That's interesting. And, uh, because you, 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 you know, you got Shopify, you know, how are you doing fulfillment? How are you taking the order from the customer? How are you getting in front of the customer? Mm. And nowadays, usually it's while they're sitting on the can scrolling through Facebook, yep, you exactly. know, how do you get, how do you get them at that point? And they're like, I want one of those tools and, and, and to have the click result in them getting a tool within two or three days. We want, you know, really quick shipping. We want it in their hands. In, and it's got to be the quality of an iPhone. So the yeah. fit and finish has to be good. And that's really been, you know, and that's, a, that's an ever, 
ever changing pursuit to, to you know to keep refining and 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 moving forward and part of financing that whole that whole pursuit is then adding other other skews and other other tools to the mix yeah that uh you know that keep make the company worthwhile or justify spending two hundred thousand dollars on a on a robot that feeds the cnc machine that costs you two hundred thousand dollars yeah and, exactly you know so tell me about the rest of your so, portfolio so i see the super uh, what do you call it snagger tool the snagger tool yeah the snagger tool is our flagship it's a it's a unique product no one else you know has anything like it yeah um it is uh it's something that can go in the pocket of every firefighter in northern and that really is what we built the back of the business on yeah i don't have uh, many other tools here in front of me what um, sort of stuff do you guys do is it all like single a lot of a lot of, lot of small single aluminum pieces so these are mini spanners oh interesting. there's a small little you know so you can Carry them in your gear and tighten and loosen couplings wherever you are. Yeah, and uh, they're they're fairly popular. And we have uh, uh, wedges, aluminum wedges, large. <laughs> I can and use those. I'm throwing new sprinklers all night, getting soaked my finger in the thing, wait for the water to quit. Exactly. So yeah, and holding doors open and whatever. And again, they're all in nice. Um, well, now powder coated, but you know the, the idea is that the fit and finish is just gorgeous. Like these these tools feel feel amazing. Do you end up um, machining those things, or are those also extruded aluminum parts? They're extruded, and then and then we run mm. them through a machining to, to do the, the 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 smoothing of the edges and That's to true so up the the tolerances to yeah. oh it's within thousandth of an inch, and then we do laser the, the oh, sorry the laser engraving yeah. on the end you know and all that so there's there's a a, a nice fit and finish to that um, we we've got a lot of respectful entry tools so the, like your Lloyd tools the J hooks things yeah. like that so we're not booting down doors we can respectful get in and that's entry. that's I love that that's a very kind term. <laughs> Well, it's and it's really gaining in, in popularity, you know, and 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 yeah. that's where we're 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 starting to sell the law enforcement agencies because you got to do a wellness check at a re, at a retirement. That's a home. good point. It's like okay, well, I know the person just I don't even bust their door in; they just need someone exactly. to help them up. I mean, come on. Yeah, you can just a little a little Lloyd tool. You just drop it in, pull back, open it up. Everybody good? You know, or J hook? You can go in yeah. front. You can get into any commercial any commercial building. Um, are they all you know, public so, safety service type tools? Like, or, or yeah. do you touch other markets yeah, too? Yeah, no, they're all they're all right now in in, in the public safety service uh, uh, niche, I would say, and and we are looking at, at 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 expanding out of that or at some point, but right now we've got our, our hands full uh, with the with the firefighting world and, yeah. and and the little dabbling in with the U.S. Navy and 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 nuclear uh, power plant firefighting yeah, just two crews little markets, or like the Navy and the nuclear power plants. It's no big deal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, awesome. you know. <laughs> man, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. What was yeah. it like? I feel like there's two things I really want to know about. If I'm picturing you as a firefighter with the dairy milk business and these other these businesses, <laughs> yeah. how did you manage the growth of your small business and handing that over to somebody else? Was it hard to be like, man, this is my baby. I invented this thing. You run with it or was it? No, it was baby? a very, uh, it was a, that was a very relieving process for me. I, really? I'm, I'm, Tell me about um, that. I, well, I, I, I like ideas. I, I think I'm a fellow that's got lots of ideas. And so you don't get too married to one. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so if, if, you're the, if you only have one idea your whole life, you kind of hang on to it real tight, and then it does become your baby. <laughs> but but I, I have lots of different interests, you know, and, and, and we have the firefighting thing. We are, you know, we're working in wind energy or in solar or in milking cows or excavators or whatever you know i always had lots of interests yeah and i realized that uh, and 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 from and i have my business philosophy has always been to surround myself with people smarter than me so that i can you know be advanced by them being smarter you know yeah. and and you have to relinquish control and and meeting paul was was you know in that aspect of my life was 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 great because you know he had his as much or more energy than I did. He's got the smarts for it and he's creative. And, and I think the, the unique part about our relationship, which I haven't seen mirrored in many other relationships in my life is that there's a total respect, but, but, uh, but an ability to kind of correct each other without taking it personally. Mm, you know, interesting. if you said, I, I want to make this and I, oh, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and then, then you could either be hurt by that or you could realize, well, it is a stupid idea. We've had plenty of stupid ideas, let me tell you. And we just, you know, they kind of go on that back burner. And, well, yeah, that they was sit over there and you guys run with the good ones. Yeah, and neither of us take that personally. And I think that, that adds a lot of strength to the business because you can have an honest conversation about new things coming along or how we should run the business. And if nobody takes things personally and you realize, hey, this is just a business discussion, 
uh, it can advance. So no, handing it over to Paul was actually a great relief for me um, in that I knew there was somebody focused 24-7 on moving this forward <laughs> and hiring the right staff that we needed in place. We've got about six employees working with us now. Oh, cool. And, and I, could, I could be part of it uh, as much or as little as I wanted. You know, I didn't have to be there five days a week either. I certainly wasn't. That's really on, interesting. You know, on the phone or drive out. I mean, Paul lives about five hours away from me. So oh, really? So you guys aren't even that close. Shit, no, no. I mean, no, we're not. No, we're we're about five <laughs> you hours. Say whatever you want on this other. thing. I, I think we might okay. explicit anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. I uh, yeah. So no, I, I yes. Yeah, so he's about uh, he's about oh four hours away. I would say, and uh, so I would go out for you know a couple days at a time, and um, but really, Paul carried the carried the ball forward. Where's the shop? Is it by him or is it by you? It's by him. It's in Hamilton, Ontario, oh, which is near Toronto. Yeah, That's just so by cool. Niagara Falls, actually, very close to Niagara Falls. Ontario. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's yeah. interesting to hear yeah. you talk about that. That like, um, I, I heard two really cool things. One, like the, having multiple ideas and knowing that like you're not so married to just this one thing that's the only thing you can think right. about. I think is something that business people struggle with when they're like, you know, we've actually I can think of one gentleman we had on the show that was just so like this is the only thing, and it's it's so like maybe not burdening, but you can just feel the tension that's like, I right. know I have to make this work. This is my only idea. But it sounds like I mean you know yourself well enough to know. If this isn't it, it's the next one. If that's not it, it's the next one. And there's right. something in like the serial entrepreneur. I, I was in biofuels. I was in stage lighting. I was in something else. I am right. always yeah. like, there will be something. I love doing what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And I know that it's not yeah. going to be forever. And so right. when I think about that, I would encourage people that might be listening to this that are considering getting into business or whatever, is to gut check yourself and know like, am I okay knowing that I have another idea? And if that's the case, then can I be okay knowing that maybe what I'm doing might not be perfect and I have to tweak it or adjust it? But you get analysis right. paralysis otherwise and other... If you're looking forward, just run with it, you know. Exactly, and and there's I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of wisdom in what you just said in that in in that the development of an idea, and this is the software industry's been doing this for years, you know. <laughs> hey, the game kind of works. Let's release it, and then based on the comments we get back from the people playing the game, we know where the bugs are. Rather Don't than running through all the tests, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, but it's 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 like you're you using do. your customers as beta testers, but it's it's actually a more efficient way to go. And I remember hearing another fella say. Um, well, we talked with another guy recently who said, you know, my biggest concern, you know, I don't want to release the, this uh, whatever tool uh, to the public because, you know, I, I got to make sure I'm going to be able to not run into the problem I did. You know, I'm going to have way too many sales. And you say, well, how about you start with making like I'd use the market as a test. So then I have to worry about if that you run out of first. inventory that, that. OK, that's great. Then that's that. Then you deal with that problem. Then don't anticipate the problem too far ahead of time. That's a good point. Because yeah. you can spend a lot of energy solving problems that never become problems. Yeah. You know, who were your mentors so, or like who helped to teach you some of that stuff? Was it all intuitive or were there folks that were like, hey, just run? Well, just a, lot, a lot of it was screwing up and just realizing I don't want to do that again. But I know I, Henry and Archie, the two guys that I mentioned at the beginning that, that, that we that we worked together, they they had you know, they were in manufacturing. Mm. Uh, Henry flew around the world uh, with, with with automakers, you know, streamlining their production facilities. And Archie had been in tool and die all his life. Interesting. Um, so they were the really competent he, in that art. Extremely, extremely competent. And and and. You know the the idea of how to how to prototype a tool or what to what to anticipate about a stress point or something like things I had no idea mm. about. You got to surround yourself with guys like that who who, who they're not going to necessarily come up with the idea for the tool, but they're going to come up with the ideas to make it work. You know, so if we yeah. if we like like extruding for example, what problems are we going to? And then you go to the extruder, and the extruder's like, okay, well we can do that profile. However, in the cooling process, it's going to sh- you know it's going to pinch here or yeah. something's going to change shape okay well and then you talk to the anodizer well each person is an expert in their own world and as long as you're willing to just ask questions and be humble about it you know uh you can learn a lot so I feel it's, like it's a, that's the key with entrepreneurs is being able to right. weave 50 different disjointed skill sets together into one cohesive like get all the arrows flying in the same direction even if yeah. the arrows don't know what other arrows exist the extruder might not know that the anodizer exists the anodizer might not know that the firefighter yeah. exists, but if you can communicate with everybody and you can be that intermediary liaison, then yeah. that's what makes businesses so powerful because otherwise everyone would do all the things already. But the unique thing about being a business person, an entrepreneur is that 
you speak a little anodizer, a little extruder, a little firefighter, yeah, yeah. a little manufacturing, yeah. a little automotive, and 100%. all of a sudden, then you end up with your product and it's successful. Well, and I think there's a, and it's not a better than or worse than, but I think there's a unique, uh, uh, like being an entrepreneur is a very unique skill set. It's a very unique position in the world. And, and, and the majority of folks want security and they want, uh, uh, you know, a, a stable and steady job that, 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 you know, grants them a living. And that's great. And, it, and they can focus on one, um, one skill set. To a, to a grave degree. And I'm glad that, you know, uh, when I had my you know, tonsils removed by a surgeon, that he was very <laughs> was focused specific job, was and knew and, and that the, the, the anesthesiologist or whatever you say that, you know, was very good at what she did. And all like you need specialized folk and you need other people like us that can bounce around the can and go, wait a second. I know we've always done it like this, but why don't we try whatever i mean i've got a list as long as my arm of other ideas i want to try we just don't have enough funding at this point you know and someday yeah, we'll get something. there and oh yeah yeah exactly you know i mean and, and you you guys are in led lighting i mean the guys that figured out you know that blue uh what was it the 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 the, the blue diode that was the key right oh, we had yeah. led lights for many years but somebody that he won a nobel prize for it but he's like blue that's the key how do, whatever chemical it was used that got the blue light to work now leds are there they're everywhere and you, so i mean and yeah. you guys have built a whole business off of that in the last i mean th they weren't around 12 years ago that's a very good point no ago. i mean in the last 10 years this industry has totally become a thing that, that it wasn't right before. right and it opened up that ability opened up all because now they don't they're not hot necessarily yeah. or you can put them on your you know you can i mean if you're from quebec you wrap your motorcycle in them <laughs> underneath you know and and uh uh, whatever it just opened up other yeah. you know, uh, possibilities for ideas but I think yeah I think it's um, I think if you're a creative person and you've got lots of ideas and, and if you you are willing to be open with those ideas with other people you still get the credit if there's any worry about credit yeah that, that I give a rip but it's really a conglomeration of a whole bunch of other people that all said little things and you're kind of like eh. Yeah, you can incorporate that. I know? think about in my early days, I used to always say we when it was high vis was just like right. the dog. We made flashlights. Right. Like, we like yes. I Same made thing. flashlights yeah. and Kevin would help me sometimes. And then I would talk yeah. about we in the sense that it was like it was the cashier at the local hardware store. It was the guy at the welding shop that let me borrow his machine for an afternoon. It was yeah. the lady at the gas station that said hello when I was filling my truck. It was that whole team. I mean, like it could be me i make this widget or it could be we yeah. the whole community gets rallies around me and i pull pieces from everyone and then it's the person that taught me this or that and you eventually i always just say like i would stand on the shoulders of giants and then i would look really right. good in the process right. but it wasn't really because i knew anything it was just because i was a oh, conglomerate oh, that you're a sponge together. you're 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 taking it in from everywhere you can and and uh and somehow you focus it back to 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 to, to whatever it is that you're trying to develop yeah or whatever team you're trying to build yeah you told me about you have like a thousand ideas looking forward and i think i heard yeah. you say you had a few failures looking back can you tell me about some of the times that maybe it didn't work as you expected or did it go according to plan oh man i'm trying to think of some of the things that paul and i played with i mean there, there's uh um well, there's ideas that are still on the shelf, but they're, maybe their time is it, it, like the, the the cost of development is too high. You yeah. know, like we're, so our focus has always been tools that are very um, like single piece. You know, there's one piece of aluminum. Oh yeah. Um, there's no moving parts. Nothing can rust or fall off of it. Um, we've added a whole bunch of tools, by the way, that are all Me Too products, like you know, seatbelt cutters and screwdrivers and sure. wrenches and. Uh, and, and we've made we put our own unique spin on some of those things hydrant wrenches and stuff like that high rise packs um you know weight vest double as bulletproof vests all this kind of things that are just me too products but um i'm trying to think of of uh, yeah you know, even like a hard lesson you guys had to learn in the early days i just feel like there's so many things that, that business people learn don't even think about the fact that they had to learn something well, yeah, yeah. Anodizing was a big lesson for us, um, and COVID made that really apparent. We we realized that we had to, we had to control our supply chain better. Mm -hmm. And so tell me what COVID anodizing hit, is too, for someone that might not know oh, what that yeah, an, process is. So, so when you have aluminum and you, you you machine it to a finish, then anodizing gives it that nice. Uh, it's a protective coating. Uh, it can be non-conductive. It can be conductive. Um, it can be multicolored. So if you go into mountain, like a lot of mountain climbing equipment has got anodizing on it. Uh, it's, it's like a, that it's a nice... semi gloss, like real beautiful, like almost like the metals dyed a certain color or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you get those. Yeah, and it, it really gives a nice finish. Your, 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 your iPhone has got an anodized surface to it. Um, so it's like know, an alternative to paint, an alternative to powder coating. Yep. It would be another 
the coding ish type thing that would go on finish exactly and it's and there's a process of of how to uh it's it's done with an electrical electrical circuit so it makes it attractive from an electrical standpoint uh it, it, that's what attracts the anodizing to the product in the in the in the manufacturing process and i don't know how many tools we wrecked um going through that anodizing process uh to figure out how to hang them you know so so go through the anodizer properly um I mean, we, I don't know, I, Paul's probably got more scrap metal in the back there than, <laughs> than you can, you know, than you can imagine. Um, and, and so when COVID hit, then, then that is a, a highly uh, labor intensive process. So the, the, the place that we brought our tools to to get anodized had probably 150 workers. Well, when COVID went through that plant, you know, all of a sudden we couldn't, you know, we couldn't supply uh, uh, customers anymore. Oh. Like we weren't getting the, the, the tools back and we were getting about a, uh, 30% failure rate. Like every third tool was no good. Really? Why was so that? Having, well, because the anodizing wouldn't take properly on it or there's burn marks or, oh, or so things it, like it that. Oh, so coming up, you know, whatever. It would look, it would look yeah, so we're like, that's, and, and then you'd either, some of them were okay and you could do a scratch and dent sale mm. and others we just had to, 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 to chuck all together. And that just adds to your cost of goods sold. Like it's yeah. just crazy, you know? So we, so that, that wasn't necessarily a failure as much as a learning point, a strong learning point, which we brought it in house and we do now do our own powder coating. So oh, no way. Powder coating. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we do yeah. our own. Improvise adapt yeah, and overcome. Like, all right, so how are we going to do this? Well, because we can control the process a little better that way. And we also were able then to, you know, if you ordered a tool right now, the, our goal was always to be able to deliver you any tool on our list within, you know, three days, something yeah. like that. It's If you're in Texas and you order something, it's there in three days. None of this waiting around for you know, a month and a half baloney. Yeah. Uh, we needed to control that, 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 that process. Um, the, you know, on the software side, we also, you know, learned some hard lessons with the whole, you know, we had focused completely on direct to consumer, well, not direct, only direct to consumer, but, uh, you know, electronic marketing using Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, things like that. And when, the, when the, the privacy laws changed last year or, or a year and a half ago, with Apple and with Facebook and things like that. And we couldn't target customers in the same way. You couldn't do your ads as uh, specific yeah. to, to the customers. We, 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 yeah, we saw some real drop off on our, uh, on our sales for a little while. Interesting. Uh, and, yeah, what do you think about that stuff? Gears. I'm always so curious. Like, you know, I think about these tech companies that know so much about people and like, I hear right. the people that say, oh, I kind of don't like that they know about me. And then I hear that, well, I'd rather get something in my feed that's actually useful. But like, how do right. you guys, like you obviously leverage that stuff to be able to find the folks that need to buy your tools. How do well, you balance your kind of thoughts on yeah. that? Well, I, I mean, both, I mean, I love it. I don't get ads for, you know, Wonder Bra anymore because <laughs> I don't need to wear one. But it's it's like, you know, you, you get, I get cool stuff like jackknives and, 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 and tools and, you know, like my feed's full of stuff I like, yeah. leather, you know, um, it's, 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 it's tailored to me and I don't mind that. And I realize that, that the, that it doesn't know about me specifically. It knows about my type. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. It, you know, if, and, and so that, that's, that's the, 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 the way the, the ana analytics work. It's really helpful for a company like ours. I, I mean, we'd be nowhere without uh, social media marketing. Yeah. Like that, that is the only way we could have ever gotten off the ground. I mean, we've sold tools around the world, you know. So um, cool. There's a snagger that was hung on the South Pole. No you know, way. The Antarctic oh, that's cool. Fire Department. Yeah, they, we had a little photo contest at one point, and... They sent back a picture of the South Pole with a snagger hanging on it, and they kind of won the contest. But That's anyway, cool. um, that ability to reach people where they're at uh, in a in a very specific way and not distract them with you know like a, you know if you're a 75 year old grandmother that that doesn't you know that likes to knit not liking not likely to drag a snagger tool to the no top. why why fill your feed with something you don't care about <laughs> so personally i love that, that that you can do targeted marketing yeah you know if it's manipulative yeah, or something like that okay now we're crossing the line but if it means you know if somebody's interested in firefighting tools or firefighting in general or law enforcement or public right. safety uh and and they're getting you know appropriate ads uh i think it's great that's awesome. and and we've and we've switched to the amazon platform oh interesting uh, amazon Amazon uh, has a different way of owning the information, hmm. so it's not facing the same privacy restrictions. Can you and target that's really, in the Amazon? Like you could say, like, hey, I want to target this profile yeah. of person. Yes, oh, yeah, okay. Amazon will yeah. will do that for you. I mean, you 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 you're paying them for that that those kind of ads. But sure. yeah, within Amazon, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, or not Spotify, yeah, Shopify, mm. um, there's ways to optimize your advertising dollars. That's and, interesting. And so yeah, they build. 
they build profiles. Because, I mean, when you go on Amazon and buy a plunger for your toilet, you know, it's like customers like this also bought. Oh, or yeah, yeah. Based on, you know, I mean, like, like oh, yeah, that's yeah. all just kind of going, oh, this guy's interested in this I'll because he bought that. Flipper, I'll get you know, whatever. And then it's yeah. not just associated. It's probably like, oh, you might also be interested in all these other tools or all these other home goods or all these, whatever. Well, exactly. Yeah. I always found it interesting that, <laughs> that websites would be like, I'd buy a shop vac. You know, and then the next ad I get for a shop vac. You're like, well, I, just I don't need thing. a shop. I just bought one. Yeah. I, <laughs> you should be sending me an ad for, yeah. a, you know, like a drill the bags press or that go in right? the shop vac or yeah. the hose or yeah. or sand to dump on the floor that I can suck up with yeah, the shop vac. Funny. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's like so they got smart to that, and so now I think the 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 uh, the AI is is starting to really kick in on some of this stuff too, and understand buying power p- patterns of of uh, of consumers, but we're also finding a lot of. Um, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's the virality of video. It's the virality of, of you know, and so we've done a bunch of videos. Yeah, I want you guys to tell me about like that. that. I hear that's one of the most unique things about your business is like this magazine, this media thing. Like, talk right. to me about what you guys are doing in media because clearly, like, I love multimedia and I love video content and I yeah. want to hear about what you guys are doing there. Well, so again, Paul knows lots of folks, and Paul, his background prior to us connecting, you know, he worked in on, on movie sets, uh, building, you know, platforms oh, and, and different things, and making widgets to hold mics in different ways and lighting, and he just was kind of in that world and knew a bunch of guys uh, in in that space, and those two fellas in particular, Alex and Chris, who had a background of videography, uh, putting movies together for. Um, for for a church they were a part of uh and 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 other uh and they these guys had gone off on their own and um and, and they're a very new company and so we said hey like why don't we like help you get your company going because we have projects that you guys can do yeah and uh and we 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 put a fair amount of investment into uh into our video production and actually that's before paul and i even partnered up when it was just snagger paul helped me put the first snagger videos together Interesting. And we had a we had, <laughs> at our at our uh, and we wanted it to be good. Like we wanted it to be punchy. We wanted to catch it. Yeah, you know, I don't want to scroll through. Really, really sales guy, here's my snagger tool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we took a whole pile of you know OSB board and built a two story structure behind the fire hall and asked the chief at the time. Uh, he's now the chief in Ottawa. But anyway, at the time, it's like, hey, do you mind if we do some videos? Like, yeah, no problem. Just be smart about it. Yeah. You know, and the next time he comes around, we got a two story structure on fire behind the fuck. <laughs> what? Chief, I was being smart. Heck? I swear. I really <laughs> thought yeah, this <laughs> Are you guys insane? Oh, well, I'll keep going. Don't show So, our anyway, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, we, <laughs> precisely. So, yeah, if you look at some of those early videos, I mean, we were smashing cars and, and, and cutting through cars and burning, you know, and whatever to, to get the initial videos. But that was all Paul and, and a couple of the, the buddy the friends that he had, Andy and some others. Um, and, and the trick was just in the video editing, like yeah. was taking that and then being able, you know, with about two days of footage, you can, you can put all kinds of different different videos you together boil it down and to a minute and a half of good content no. yeah so, yeah or even now 15 second tiktok yeah, you know and exactly. they just just yeah and what really kind of spurred it on was um we thought let's tell the story we're looking at companies like red bull uh you know that don't really oh i mean red bull gives you wink great but most of their advertising is done through you know associative story it's all experiential what, it's like what what do the people who do red who drink red bull do with their lives it's not drinking red bull isn't the ad it's doing all the stuff is the ad and then oh, exactly yeah it's f1 racing it's, yeah. it's skydiving it's whatever extreme sports can we and, collab uh, on a piece of material by the way this sounds like a great idea i love 100 percent. yeah no that'd be a, that'd be a great idea that i'd love to awesome. yeah yeah so and, and we thought okay let's tell and so we have Modus TV, which the and the idea behind it was let's tell the story of firefighters, um, you know, in their daily lives. What what do they do that's interesting, you know? And and we had connected with these uh, three fellas out of uh, out of BC. They have a podcast called Down to Fight Fire, mm. and uh, they're a great bunch of guys. And we thought this is really interesting. Here's three volunteer firefighters who get together, and for the last two and a half three years, they've been doing this podcast, and they're getting quite a following, and. They're reviewing our tools and they like our tools and we, you know, and, and, and they put them through the paces and they criticize the tool or they, you know, they or critique it is a better way of saying yeah. it. And, uh, and, and, and they promote our stuff and that was great. And so we said, well, let's promote them, you know, let's, let's go the other way. And yeah. so we, we flew out there about a year ago and we videoed these guys in their element, you know, cause 
The one fellow is a, a you know a, a sheriff like a like a, a guard at the, at the local jail. The other fellow is an EMT in a neighboring uh, a neighbor with a neighboring f- fire department. And the other fellow is a parts guy at the local auto parts store. That's awesome. Uh, but the, together they put this podcast together and they do fantastic training with their department. And um, yeah, I mean you you strike up a friendship, but also it's just an interesting story. You realize like yeah, you see a volunteer fire department a, a firefighter at a scene, you know, cutting somebody out of a car or something like that well two hours later they're back at their desk or they're back at the <laughs> yeah you don't even think about you it. know whatever right. they were doing be- beforehand and so we thought hey let's tell that story and i and, and we don't know where this will go or whether it's you know whether how how it'll continue or how it'll how it'll change um but it's it's just kind of a brought to you by modus let's build this firefighting community um in any way you can you're doing it with a podcast to tell you know the stories of firefighters who've done you know entrepreneurial endeavors uh this is a kind of the same uh same mindset and i I have no idea if it'll work or not but i think that there's a there's a neat thing when we talked about this quite a bit with with you know the firefighter retention Mm. how do we keep guys in the fire service how do we yeah especially in places like where you're we're rural you know like it relies on the volunteers relies on people being interested yeah, and, and, and today's, you know, everybody's busy and, and, and you've got multiple communities, you know, to be part of in your, in, your, in your day-to-day. Like, you know, you got kids in hockey or you got, you know, you got your bowling league or I don't know, whatever people do for fun. Um, <laughs> and, and so how do, you, how do you make firefighting and that brotherhood, uh, that service, is something that everybody wants to be a part of? Yeah, you know? make it and, engaging and, and exciting. And, I mean, that's got to be something, you know? Yeah, and and the days of of everybody being at the fire hall every night, you know, and guys being, you know, I've got twenty years, but I'm I'm unique in our department because you know there's a couple other guys that have been on as long, but many of the the average life expectancy of a firefighter is, or life exp- service expectancy yeah, service. is about four four or five years. I you heard know? that from someone else that was on the show today. We were talking about yeah. warning lights, and like I was telling them, oh, I'm not so interested. I want to get into the warning lights for POV space because you know these things, all this all this stuff. And the guys like. Dude, most people that buy this stuff stay in the fire service five years, and then whatever you sold them is obsolete. And I'm like, yeah. wait, what? And they're like, yeah, yeah. dude, the, the shelf life on a, on a voluntary firefighter is five years. It's from 18 to 25, and then they forget about it and never yeah. come back. And That's I was right. Like, you got to, yeah. Didn't even think about it, but yeah. it is so interesting, and it would be great if you, you got 100,000 new firefighters every year in North America. That is 100,000. Brand new one with zero years of experience, right? Like That's, that's right. Yeah, they're well, always they're new, to, new to the fire. That's the turnover, you know? That's so you have 1.2 million firefighters in North America at 10% turnover, basically. So you're looking at 100 to 120,000 new firefighters in the fire service every year. So if that's you're selling cool. POV lights, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, s- I- send me a set. I could use it on a pair because <laughs> they burn it. But it, no, it, it, it's, yeah, that's, that, that's huge. But it's also sad. I mean, it's, it, it's expensive training wise, turnout gear, all that stuff. Like, how do we, and, and how do we build, like, what you're doing with the podcast, with, DTFF is doing with the podcast and talking about the trainings and everything like that. And I think of our department, we get about 350, 360 calls a year, something like that. With we're fairly medical, busy. That's sort of thing too, huh? Yeah. So we're fairly active, but we don't get like loads of, 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 of the real fun calls, like a good house fire. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I know we're not, you know, and, but listening to the, I was telling this to the DTFF guys. I'm like, listen to you guys talk about your calls. I kind of live vicariously. Yeah, you know, like we haven't had true. a house fire in three weeks. Now we we had a good one last weekend, but um, it, it, you know, it, it'll, and I think of other departments that are smaller than ours that might have 30 calls in a year. I remember you know? there and was some folks we talked to the other day. They're like, Oh, we run 65 calls a year. I'm like 65 calls a year. What? They're like, that's yeah. all we do. I mean, it's like, you know, you get a, get a something or alarm goes off. Everyone yeah. shows up. There's only not that much happens. And if you're be very hard to stay motivated in that, in that type of framework, I can you imagine. Know, I don't know to, that I would like, yeah. well, I'm really going to carry my pager all the time. If it only goes off once a week. I mean, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, I have a buddy who's a, who was a, you know, worked in an airport, like an airport firefighter. You know, I thought that has got to be a different type of mindset because you spend your life preparing for the worst call yeah. that you'll ever get. You know, a plane load of 300 people with surrounded by jet fuel that just slammed into the tire. Yeah. Once right? in a lifetime, That's... you actually do what you train for and the rest of the time you sit there waiting for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you have to be trained to a very high level yeah. and you have to maintain that. I don't know how that, you know, that's not for me, but <laughs> me either. But, but it, and so I think of how do we kind of mimic that in the, in the fire service with, uh, you know, with, with the, um, with all these little departments and, how, and pro- provide a connection. And so that was our attempt at it. Is that it, what your media team now kind of like you bring that yeah. fire service culture to the people in the field that 
stay motivated by right. participating in whatever you're doing in, in the lifestyle. Yeah, and we have to obviously figure out how to monetize that to some extent because I mean each of those videos is probably you know probably cost you 40, 50 grand. So it's yeah. not a it's not a cheap endeavor. But yeah. it's 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 uh, we got to start somewhere. And I think and, and again it's like these ideas like you just let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah. Let's put a let's invest in something and see. And if it sticks, great. If it doesn't, ah, well, let's try something else. That's you know, so like, interesting. We've got the rest of our lives to figure out what we're doing wrong. Has your persona as a firefighter changed as Modus has grown and as your business ventures in the fire service? Like, do your firefighting brothers and sisters think of you differently now than they did ten years ago? No, they think I'm a complete idiot, and they always have, and then that's <laughs> that's pretty normal. And I no I. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> no, I, 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 I don't spend as much time. Like I, I, I don't spend a lot of time, you know, yakking about it to, to, to the guys I hang around with day to day. I, we, we were a great bunch, but, uh, no, I got my Borat G string on at the Christmas party, like everybody else. <laughs> and, uh, it's, as you it's, do, you know, surprised you didn't wear it to the podcast, but you know, no, I didn't. Yeah. No, I thought I'd keep it, keep it civil here, but, uh, no, I, it's, it's, yeah, no, I mean, they, they, yeah, I, I, I get, uh, I get plenty made fun of. It's all good. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Luke, where are you guys going? If, if you looked out in your five years or your 10 years down the road, where are you going and where are you going to be happy with, with Modus or with your personal life, career, firefighting goals? What, what's on the horizon? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, firefighting is always going to be there for sure. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 but Paul and I talk many times about, uh, you know, building, building Modus to be, uh, to be the Amazon of firefighting. In a sense, yeah, you know, if you if you got, I, I I need something related to the fire service. Um, you know, you're gonna go to modus.com and there it'll be. Uh, you know, or or and 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 how do we build build that? And and we also are looking at ways of, um, in a sense, we've built a good platform and a voice for, uh, or, or we've got a lot of connections in the in the industry. You know, we can you know email list or otherwise, and uh, we've talked to a lot of small tool manufacturers and other guys that that you know want to get out there and wanting to have their product known and, and and so we're exploring ways of uh you know possibly helping folks do that through uh, whether it's licensing or i don't know what you know uh even even walking through some of the manufacturing headaches kind of enabling these other people that want to start a business to yeah do some of that yeah and it's not purely altruistic i mean it's like hey we, you know yeah, we okay. can help you produce your product we've, nice we've, we've gone through product this producing products right yeah that's right we, we've gone through the school of hard knocks and 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 i know what it's like to you know even to like go to fdic and you get a booth and well when you start out you get a little 10 by 10 booth or an 8 by 10 booth and you end up in the in the west wing where nobody (laughs) bothers to go this year's gonna be because all the the calendar girls are on the other end you got to be by them so it's it's like you you know how do you get noticed and i think we're uh we paul has really helped us you know optimize that that ability to get noticed so how do we help other you know help our help others uh, achieve that and that'll that'll obviously help our business um and and yeah we've got we've got a whole pile of ideas of tools that we want to build out uh, uh we just got to find the time and and uh you know uh funding to uh to, to pull that off so five years from now we hope to have you know a whole lot more to offer and uh yeah, that's awesome. Be a, be a much bigger company than we are today. Well, if our audience wanted to learn more about you guys or to follow, watch this podcast and these docos, like where are they going to find you guys on the social world, online, that sort of thing? Well, at modusfirerescue.com is the uh, is the website. That's the uh, that's kind of the the, the the bulk landing page. But uh, anywhere on Instagram, you type in Modus or, or Facebook or TikTok or whatever, we'll uh, we'll be there. That's awesome. Well, Luke, thank you so much for joining me here on the 2448. Your story should be an inspiration to other firefighters who are looking at starting businesses or just kind of following that entrepreneurial journey because it sounds like you guys are on one heck of a fun one. So, Oh, it's great. No, thank you. I really appreciate uh, you, you, you exposing uh, our guys like us to the rest of the world. This is, this is awesome, and I hope it is an inspiration to somebody because uh, anybody that wants to try it can go for it. That's it's awesome. It's going to be great. Well, thanks, thanks again, man. We'll catch you next time. Right on. All right. Take care. Bye now.